So you've decided that you want to get a hamster, but before getting said hamster, you have to get all of the supplies for them. So you walk into the pet store and you become immediately overwhelmed with all of the choices there are. So today I'm going to be talking about everything that your hamster needs, as well as I'm going to be giving you some budget friendly options because you don't have to break the bank with everything you buy. The first most important thing you're going to need when getting a hamster is obviously an enclosure. While hamsters are small animals, they still require a lot of room because they need a lot of enrichment to keep their brains stimulated. When it comes to selecting the style of enclosure, I personally would recommend an aquarium styled enclosure. That way you're not limited to the amount of bedding that you can put. You really can put a lot, which is important for a hamster. For the size of the enclosure, I highly would recommend everybody aim for at least 800 square inches of floor space. That's 40 inches by 20 inches. And this is gonna give you plenty of space to put a ton of enrichment to keep your hamster stimulated. The enclosures that I have for my hamsters are all DIY enclosures and they range from $100 to about $200 to make. Sometimes you can make them for even cheaper, it really just depends on the supplies that you have at home. I also would recommend bin cages as long as you are finding a decent sized bin. This can be a budget friendly option, but do keep in mind that sometimes it can be harder to find a proper sized bin. Next up, you're going to need bedding. Now hamsters are burrowers, so you're not just gonna be using bedding to soak up urine. You're actually going to be using it as another enrichment. This means you're going to need to put a decent amount of safe bedding in the enclosure for your hamster. Safe bedding for your hamster to use includes paper-based bedding like Carefresh, KT Clean and Cozy, Full Cheeks paper bedding, Uber paper bedding, Boxo, and other beddings like that, as well as Aspen shavings, hemp shavings, and spruce shavings. You're gonna wanna make sure that the bedding you're choosing is burrow friendly, meaning it's not going to collapse when your hamster tries to dig a tunnel through it. So avoiding things like any paper shreddings, um, pelleted beddings, those should be avoided as well as no fleece or blankets because those don't allow for any sort of burrowing. To give a hamster a proper chance at burrowing, I highly would recommend putting at least 10 inches of bedding inside of their enclosure. If you can put more, that's even better and a more chance of your hamster burrowing. Next up, you're going to need food so your hamster doesn't starve. Unfortunately, a lot of the seed mixes sold in the pet store just aren't the greatest for your hamster and there really isn't a whole lot that I could recommend somebody go out and buy. Instead, I definitely would recommend looking on Etsy. Some people will sell their own homemade hamster food or they'll sell imported food from Europe, which is a lot better. If you are having to go to the pet store and buy a hamster seed mix, you likely are going to have to buy a couple of different brands to mix together to create something that is going to be suitable for your hamster. Next up is a wheel. Hamsters have that natural instinct to be on the move. So definitely having a wheel inside of their enclosure is extremely important. It's also important that they have a proper wheel. I would definitely recommend buying a stand-up wheel over a flying saucer wheel. You're also going to wanna make sure that it is a solid wheel and it doesn't have any mesh or rungs on it. The size of the wheel is also very, very important because anything too small can cause your hamster to have back injuries. So for a dwarf hamster, I wouldn't recommend going anything smaller than an eight inch wheel. Typically a 10 to 12 inch wheel would be much better suited. And for a Syrian and Chinese hamster, I wouldn't go smaller than a 10 inch wheel, but an 11 to 12 inch wheel would probably be best suited for them. There are some Syrian hamsters who are so big that they may actually need a 13 inch wheel. So keep that in mind. The wheel brands that I use and personally really like are the Wodent wheels, Silent Runner wheels, as well as the Night Angel wheels. Now, next up, you're going to need a water bottle or dish or both. Some people choose to have a water bottle and a water dish in their enclosure. That's perfectly fine and gives your hamster either or to choose from. I personally use water dishes for my hamsters because I find them way easier to clean out as well as my hamster is able to get the water more freely without having to do as much work as 
using a water bottle. You'll also want some extra little dishes for veggies or if you need to put some type of wet food into a dish. And these dishes don't have to be anything special. They don't have to be super expensive. You could literally go to the dollar store and find some ceramic little tiny plates or little cups that you can use. It definitely doesn't have to be something hamster specific. The next really important thing is a hideout. This is going to give your hamster somewhere to sleep or just somewhere to feel safe because they are prey animals. I would definitely recommend buying more than just one type of hideout just in case your hamster doesn't like the one specific one that you've got. There are plenty of different types of hideouts. There are a lot of different wooden hideouts. There's ceramic hideouts. The main hideouts that I personally would recommend would be multi-chamber hideouts. These are more on the expensive side, but they do mimic a hamster's burrows. But you don't have to go with anything super duper expensive. You honestly could use cardboard boxes, cut some holes in there, and your hamster probably will love that just as much as a store-bought hideout. You also can find hideouts in everyday items. If you go to the dollar store, sometimes you can find little ceramic, candle melt holders, and these can also work for a hideout for your hamster. Next up, you're gonna wanna get a sand bath and the sand. This is how your hamster may choose to clean themselves if they become overly greasy. For the sand bath itself, you can literally use almost any sort of dish. You can buy a specific sand bath for your hamster online. It may cost a little bit more, or you can literally use any bowl dish baking tray instead and that could be a lot cheaper for the sand itself you're going to want to make sure that you're not buying anything that is like chinchilla dust or small pet bath powder these can be really dangerous because they are very very fine and can cause upper respiratory infections so you're going to want to make sure that it is hundred percent sand when looking for a sand for your hamster, you're gonna wanna make sure that it does not have any added dyes and no added calcium. I personally use reptile sand. The exact brand is the Exoterra Desert Reptile Terrarium Sand. This is what I use and it is safe for hamsters. Next up, you're probably gonna wanna get some chews for your hamster to chew on in the enclosure. Is it a life or death situation if you don't have chews? No, <laughs> your hamster can live without having chew toys as long as they have other natural materials in their enclosure. And of course they're eating hard foods. They don't necessarily need dedicated chew toys and a lot of hamsters won't necessarily even use them. But I personally like to get different varieties of chew toys because sometimes my hamsters do enjoy shredding them or ripping them up. And you don't necessarily have to go to the pet store and buy them, you can use cardboard, uh, toilet paper tubes. If you grow your own safe trees in your yard and they're not sprayed with any pesticides or fertilizers, if you properly sanitize them, you can use those for some chew sticks. Just make sure that everything is safe. Types of chews that I would avoid personally would be any type of mineral or salt chews. These are really unnecessary as well as you're going to want to avoid any of the edible chews. These are the chews that have shavings and honey or some other type of filler all combined into like a shape. I would definitely avoid those. The next couple of things are more enrichment items and if you don't necessarily have every single one that's not going to be a huge issue but i definitely would recommend having a lot of these things tubes and branches now there are so many different types of these that you could get for your hamster willow tunnels cork logs grapevine wood bamboo wood paper towel tubes there's such a variety of different tube branch accessories that is going to give your hamster enrichment so there's tons for you to choose from platforms these are pretty important in my opinion because they can be used for holding up heavier items you don't want to just put a ceramic item sitting on 10 inches of bedding because if your hamster burrows underneath that that risks the hamster being crushed by that item. But if you have a platform and then you put the ceramic on top, your hamster can burrow underneath without being squished. 
Next up is other substrates. Now, once again, you can use any sort of container to hold these substrates in, whether that be a baking tray or a dish that you use for eating cereal out of. Literally any bowl can be used to hold a substrate for your hamster. Now the different substrates that you can use for enrichment for your hamster can include coconut fiber, coconut bark, cork granules, beets chips. If you use paper bedding, you could also just put aspen shavings, just a different bedding type for your hamster to dig in, explore in, maybe you hide food in there. It gives them a different texture to be walking on. Next up are sprays and what these are is just basically the seed plant dried up and you can stick them in the enclosure and the hamster has to collect them the same way they kind of would if they were out in the wild collecting seeds from a field. So it kind of gives them that enrichment of having to work for their food because they have to collect the seeds from the seed pods. Unfortunately, not a lot of pet stores are going to sell sprays. In North America, I think one of the only sprays you'll be able to find in a pet store is probably millet spray. And this is a decent one, but not all hamsters are gonna enjoy millet spray. And there are so many other varieties of sprays out there. I definitely would recommend looking on Etsy because you can find so many different types. Next up, we have herbs and flowers. This is another great enrichment for your hamster. Basically herbs and flowers are just dried plants <laughs> and you can sprinkle these all over the enclosure. Your hamster can go around and eat them if they please, or it just gives another texture and smell for them. Then of course we have treats. I don't find treats to be a needed thing because you could consider almost anything a treat. If it's something that you don't give often, I, I consider that a treat. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily have to be something you bought from the store. If it's a piece of fruit every once in a while, that can be considered a treat. So you don't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on treats. You could either make your own or you can just use high value items like little nuts and fruit and things like that. Next up, I'd recommend getting a carrier. This is really important if you have to take your hamster to the vet or maybe you are moving somewhere or evacuating. You can't just carry your hamster in your hand the entire time, that's super dangerous. So having a carrier is pretty important. I definitely would recommend a plastic carrier over the cardboard boxes you get from the pet store because your hamster definitely can chew out of that if they want to. You could also just easily make your own homemade carrier from a plastic bin. And last but not least, something I would recommend having is a playpen for your hamster. If you don't have a safe room for your hamster just to come out and play in, a playpen is definitely really important. You can use it to make a safe area for your hamster to play in safely. How many times have I said safe now? A ton. <laughs> you don't have to buy a hamster specific playpen. The type of playpen that I actually have is just those solid storage grids and I've zip tied them all together so I can fold them and unfold them to Put away for storage and i can make it as large as i want to and it wasn't too too expensive so that's pretty much everything you're going to need to start you off with owning a hamster obviously as the months and years go by you can get more and more accessories as that's usually what happens when you start owning hamsters you just acquire so many accessories and supplies <laughs> So I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.